And I'm imagining it's like a game show game, like a shovelware game, like a carnival games game. And it's like a bee wearing a tuxedo. Is that what it is? It's like a game show host bee. I have no idea what that game is. I have no clue. Oh my God, why did I accept this challenge? So this week on The Tim Provisation, I'm going to be describing 47 pieces of video game box art from memory. Hope I don't fail too hard. Hello, I'm Tim Rogers. You are watching Kotaku.com. And this is The Tim Provisation. I improvised that title last week. However, this week I have accidentally repeated it. So I suppose, for the time being at least, that's the title of our show. Now last week I stepped in front of this camera with zero preparation, relying only on my Timspiration to Timprovise. I hate my first name, I don't like saying it. It feels weird to say my first name. Is anybody else out there like not like saying your own name? I feel, I feel weird whenever I say my name. So last week I stepped in front of here with no preparation, nothing. And of course I resorted to talking about sunglasses because I had forgotten to take my sunglasses off as I did again this week, maybe on purpose. I look like I just stepped off of my jet. So for this week, I asked my good friend, Alex Jaffe, to send me a prompt because I spent so much time during the editing process last week thinking about what other sorts of topics I would do on this show that I have too many of them in my god darn head imprisoned in there. I need somebody else to feed me the cues. So what Alex Jaffe has done is he's given me a list of 47 video games. And we were, he was in turn inspired by one of the comments on the last video, which is someone said that I should try to describe video game box arts from memory. So I told Alex Jaffe, that sounds fun. I even replied to the comment, I said, that sounds fun. Alex Jaffe took it to heart, came up with 47 games because 47 is the liar's number. I'm going to try to my best to recall the 47 box arts. And I have asked our producer CJ here, CJ whose who's Slack avatar is the Phantom, played by Billy Zane in the film The Phantom. So that's, I'm warming up my memory reflex. I'll forgive anyone for having their non-real face as their Slack avatar if it's Billy Zane's The Phantom. And with that, let's get... So this week on The Tim Provisation, I'm going to be describing 47 pieces of video game box art from memory. Hope I don't fail too hard. That's the kind of video I would do if I hated myself more than I actually do. All right, what do we got? Box art number one. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Okay, so every Grand Theft Auto game has always had some sort of an illustration style to it, some sort of like college dorm room poster art look where uh, the games were made in England, so I presume it was one of the founders of DMA Designs, doesn't mean anything to sciences. Uh, childhood or high school friends did all the art, so it's always been this very not great, like, postery style. I'm stalling here. Uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is set in San Andreas, and it is, uh, it covers, like, a Los Angeles, a San Francisco, Las Vegas, so it has this California look. I believe there's some palm trees on it. I believe the logo is done up to look like a dollar bill. Oh, it was the one that, was it Lindsay Lohan? There was a celebrity who got mad that her likeness was being used on the box art. So she's on the left, wearing sunglasses, drooping forward, blonde hair, kind of in a sort of a, sort of a wig, an old Hollywood looking wig. And then in the lower right corner, you've got protagonist CJ with a white tank top. <laughs> Boom, I don't know what's in the other cells, but it's done up like a comic page. There's a bunch of other stuff. A gun, a grenade, a car blowing up, an airplane crashing vertically into the ground. I don't know. Next one, number two, Gran Turismo 5. Oh no. Okay, so, was it red? Was Gran Turismo 5 red? No, that's Gran Turismo Sport. Gran Turismo Sport had a red box. Gran Turismo 5 had like a car, because I remember Gran Turismo 1 was a, a Nissan Skyline with like a, a tarp like blowing off of it and then like a stormy sky in the background. It was like a very magazine covery image. It actually was very striking, the first Gran Turismo. And then the second one and the third one kind of went more for like car action. The third one was more like 
postery, graphic designing. The fourth one was white. The fifth one was like a black, blue, white, and there's a car wheel. It's like turned, you're seeing the rear wheel of a car. And I believe it's a Mercedes Benz. Final answer. Donkey Kong Country. Oh, well you got Donkey Kong hunkering forward, like running. He's got a big bunch of bananas in his hands, uh, in, his, in, his, in his right gorilla hand. You've got one of those little rodent-y beavers behind him. You've got a bee in the sky. You've got the Donkey Kong Country logo, which is like a red to yellow gradient. Um, you got Diddy Kong behind him with one leg up. This is my, he's got like, does he have one leg up? It's Donkey Kong Country, it's colorful. It looks like a, looks like a fun game. It's green, it's very green. They, they eschewed the typical black border. It's not 100% a black border. That's gotta be worth something, right? Uncharted 2, Nathan Drake is hanging from something. So Uncharted 1 was, you see the back of Nathan Drake? So he's like, he's like, he's like turned to the back. Uncharted 2, they show you, he's, he's got a shotgun on his back on Uncharted 1. So Uncharted 2, he is hanging from something in like an action pose. I'm looking at myself in this monitor here. I think he's hanging from his left hand, dangling down this way. Is he dangling down that way? Which way is he dangling? Because I know he's he's dangling across the logo or from the bottom of the logo. Like he's hanging from either a cliff or from like a piece of an airplane, which is a reference to a set piece in the game. Subtitle is Among Thebes. That's not really too important to the box art. I know he's dangling in a direction. Which hand is he dangling from? Man. I really want to look smart on this video because what's the point of stepping in front of a camera if you don't look smart or at least wear sunglasses? It's the left hand. It's the left hand. It's the left hand. Super Smash Brothers for Wii? Wii U. Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. Oh, okay, this is easy. I remember commenting on the Super Smash Brothers for Wii U box art one day in Target because when I lived in California, I used to like to go to Target with my friend uh, Michael Kerwin and we would, we would smack talk cereal boxes. You would just like, you know, pick up a cereal box and be like, Cocoa Puffs, you know? I wouldn't go cuckoo for this graphic design. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and I remember when Smash Bros for Wii U came out, I remember holding it up and going, it looks so delicious. It looks like if this were a cereal, I would eat the whole box on one Saturday night. It would be like a family sized box of cereal. So it's very colorful kind of oil painting-y. And the thing I recall the most is I remember remarking on how the Wii U boxes have a blue uh, little lippy downward scoop at the top, and it's blue. And then I remember Pikachu being positioned at the very bottom, like the, the tip of a spear above the logo. Worst logo font in video game history is the Smash Bros. logo font. Like, come on, call me next time. I can give you something better than that. Blue at the top, and then like this lightning bolt of yellow at the bottom. And it's just like this perfect, uh, like, the scoop is guiding the eye down to the yellow shock. And then you've got Mario, you've got everybody else on there. Whatever, there's Mario, there's Captain Falcon, there's Samus, Fox McCloud. I could stand here and list characters all day and probably be right. Final answer. I'm gonna stop saying final answer. It's the last time I'll say final. If I say final answer again, let me know. Fallout 4? Shoot. It's very green. I know it's very green and it says Fallout 4 on it and it has like a PS4 or an Xbox logo somewhere. Is it the front of a face? Like the goggles in the face with like a, is there a reflection in it? No, it's not a reflection. Crikey. Fallout? Looks like Fallout 4's box art fell out of my memory. Super Paper Mario. Is that for the uh, GameCube? I think, I think it's for the GameCube. I only know the, you know, GameCube boxes in Japan are really small. They'd be like this big. They're just very like, nice little tender, cutesy, you know, little Sanrio characters of video game box. Flip a coin. He's facing to the right. So he's like, and he's jumping and he's just a happy little Mario. There's probably a little Goomba with a hat. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just making this up. I, I, it's all I got. I lose. Destiny 2. So I remember Destiny 1 was a primo example of what me and my armchair graphic designer friends, some of whom are graphic designers in real life, were considering like this downfall of video game box art that had begun, or at least, you know, the 
lightning bolt striking the primordial soup of which had been Nathan Drake with the shotgun across his back. Um, there was a lot of game box arts that were like the back of a dude and Destiny 1 had had that as well. I remember Bioshock Infinite also had that. Destiny 2 showed you some characters. There were, uh, there were like several guardians. So I think it was like four of them. One of them's not wearing a helmet. One of them's like a dude. And they're like aiming, are they aiming upward? Are they like struggling up a hill or are they charging down a hill? Destiny is a game about user satisfaction. So I'm presuming they were charging down a hill because nothing's more fun than charging down a hill with guns. And there's just like this nice gray gradient, flat logo type. It's very nice. That's Destiny 2. Gran Turismo Sports, the red one. Now, I actually have never, have never seen it in a store because it came out after I started working here at Kotaku.com and they don't let me go outside. So I haven't been to like a GameStop in two years. Though I know it's red because I got a code for it and I downloaded it and I have this nice little red logo. I actually file all of my PlayStation 4 games into folders, which you can do. PlayStation 5, by the way, Sony, let me, let there be an alpha, alphabetize button for that because I can't alphabetize my games. They're just in this big, ugly list and I have actually manually alphabetized my games. However, Gran Turismo Sport is one of the few games that I leave outside. And its logo is this red thing. Gran, I presume Gran Turismo Sport's box is red and it's got like some car gears, like a spare tire on it. White logo, the logo's white. Don't quote me on that part. Actually, you know, it's on the record, whatever. Final answer. I said final answer again. Oh my God, Battlefield Bad Company 2? Oh, come on, Jack. There has been like a trend in the box art design of military games where we started out like games like Medal of Honor, you would like see a guy like, like he would be like this. Hey! Like that, right? And Bad Company 1 had a bunch of like platoon looking cool dudes, you know, with like these personality-ish faces. I feel like Bad Company 2, which I didn't play, played a little bit of Bad Company 1 on Xbox Live because I had a friend who was like, it's like, unlike other military games, it's fun. So military games had moved on to back of a soldier. Like you're seeing a soldier's back as he boldly stares at, at a fire of some sort. So I think Bad Company 2, which my friend said wasn't as good as Bad Company 1, must have had a dude's back on it, or at least a dude in silhouette, just guessing. Sonic Heroes. Sonic Heroes was the Sonic game where you can play, where you do play as Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails at the same time, right? All three of them are on the box, except to try to dispel some of the bad vibes that they got from Sonic Adventure 2, where some people loved Sonic Adventure 2, they were probably three or four years old, because like Knuckles had these scavenger hunt levels where you have to like dig around. I think Sonic was featured much more prominently, so he's like, his head's real big and their other heads are like really small. But all three of them are on there. You got your, your orange, your red, and your blue all represented on there. Final answer. I said final answer again. I'm a scumbag. What? Wave Race 64. So Wave Race 64 was a launch game for the Nintendo 64. Imagine that. In addition to blessing me with a lifelong love of the number 64, which is a power of two, by the way. I remember Wave Race 64 together with Mario 64 and Pilot Wings 64. No, it wasn't a launch title. Sorry, it came out Thanksgiving-ish. Don't quote me on that. This is not guessing game release dates, so I'm off the hook for that. Wave Race 64's logo was in this nice, kind of Ford logo style oval that was textured, like weirdly cardboard textured. And you see people jet skiing to the right. Are they jet skiing to the right or to the left? You know, the retina flips the image in your eye, so I'm, I'm understandably confused. They're jet skiing in one direction. I know there's, there's three, four. Let's say there's four jet skis because the game was four players. But I remember, and the Nintendo 64's logo border was on the right, so. They wouldn't be jet skiing into the border. That would look awkward. They'd be jet skiing the other way. So there's that. I'm gonna say there's four of them because the game is four players. And I remember distinctly that it said Kawasaki Jet Ski under the words Wave Race 64, which I remember at the time thinking, oh, that's cool. This game has been branded like officially with a real world-class recreational equipment vehicle brand. Yet it's not like called Kawasaki Jet Ski the video game, and it's not made by some Age Tech or Majesco or some 
some shovelware publisher. It wasn't made by THQ, it was made by Nintendo. And it was a sequel to a Game Boy game called Wave Race. So I remember seeing that and just being like, yeah, video games are grown up, man, video games are cool. I just remember thinking that when I saw that as a kid who lived in the landlocked metropolis of Indianapolis, Indiana, nowhere near water, much less a jet ski, gave me dreams. Yokai Watch for the Nintendo 3DS, level five. Level five are, uh, they're like product design masters. They're like, uh, they're, they're really good at wrapping a game in like a, a product designy wrapper all the way back to like Dark Cloud 2, which has these very, uh, very like user friendly, but also aesthetically tasteful menus. And I remember always noting that in like, just right, right down to every level. I remember Nino Kuni for the Nintendo DS, which didn't come out in America. The first Nino Kuni had this really nice. It, it included a book, uh, it, like a big book. It was like a book of spells that was the same book as the book in the game, and you need to look in the book while you play the game to do stuff. I just remember always like having admiration for their product design skills. Which brings me to Yokai Watch, which I believe has like a fabric patterny sort of branded looking background, like a, a white background with like some silhouettes, probably gray. And then the logo is middle center and there's like a wreath of characters. There's like a wreath of characters sitting above and behind the logo. And it's on this nice background. And it's just, it looks like a pleasant product. And I recall because my brother got that for his son for Christmas. And I remember looking at the box art and going, this is very tasteful. And my brother goes, you know, whatever, man. Overwatch has got Tracer on it. Everybody knows that. My mom knows who Tracer is. No, she probably doesn't. Is Tracer from, she's from England? Right? So she's a, uh, she's a, uh, she's surfboarding out. So how is she? She's like, her head is down in the lower left because the logo's up there and she's splashing down to the right on a, uh, on a white background. So she's splaying out. Just bending my mind as I try to contort myself into her form. I can't contort myself into, oh, there it is. Final answer, I said it again. I'm a scumbag. I'm a scumbag. And I'm gonna die. Who's next? FIFA 16? There's like a million FIFAs. There's an athlete on the front. At some point, FIFA learned all the game design lessons from Pro Evolution Soccer, AKA Winning Eleven. Wonderful series of games, Winning Eleven. They learned all the lessons. They, they stole so much stuff and features. And I remember FIFA always had the white background. And I remember thinking, if it was FIFA 15, I remember thinking they had even gone so far as to steal the dramatic, theatrical, stadium-style box arts of the Pro Evolution Soccer series. So it's like, you can see the grass, you can see a crowd, you can see the lights, and there's an athlete in the middle. And for the god darn life of me, I don't know who it is. I'm gonna guess it's Lionel Messi. I'm guessing it, Messi. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. So Halo Combat Evolved 1 had this really pleasant, evocative of your joyful love of video games sort of box art. So it was very green and blue. It was just very nice, pleasant primary colors. You've got Master Chief with the gun. You know, he's got a gun, however, he's got this Tonka truck-esque friendly car face on his helmet. So he looks, he looks pleasant. He doesn't look, he looks threatening, though he looks threatening to someone else. Combat Evolved Anniversary, embracing the relative cynicism of the age, which is games got more, uh, games got dark. Stuff got personal, stuff got serious. In embracing that, I just remember Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary being sort of like it was very sepia-toned and washed out and it was dark. It was almost like they were making fun of games like Gears of War for, they were always being criticized by users as being brown and bland. So I feel like Combat Evolved Anniversary like browned it up and blanded it up and it just kind of looked really sepia and washed out, desaturated, but it's still Master Chief kind of aiming a gun and instead of a blue sky, it's like a little bit of a sun sunset sheen kind of lens flare look. Like they just went kind of like, they saw the top and they went over it. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection is one of many Genesis collections purported to be ultimate, allegedly possessing an ultimacy. However, Sonic's Ultimate, I believe, was for the PS3 and Xbox 360. And it has the original promo art, like darker blue 
airbrushy Sonic the Hedgehog facing to the right. I think he's facing to the right. Behind him is a fuzzed out Ozymandias video wall of Sega classics that is in like a curve. Can you see Sonic's reflection on the ground? Final answer. I said it again. Kirby's Pinball Land was for the Game Boy. Is that released in 93? Let me know in the chat, uh, in the, the comments. There's no chat, this isn't live. Kirby's Pinball Land. My little brother had it. It had that, uh, so Nintendo Game Boy games, well, in, in Japan, they're in much smaller, like tighter, little candy-ish boxes. They always had this really nice aesthetic, this whole vibe, the whole packaging vibe of a Game Boy game was really clean. And there was this almost like a board gamey vibe, almost like you're looking at like a, like a toy. Like there would be like a physical toy inside. They did like these nice abstract clean images. It's got Kirby and it's got pinball. I know that Kirby's pink on it. Kirby was white in uh, Kirby's Dreamland. However, he's pink in Kirby's Pinball Land. I remember my little brother loved Kirby's Dreamland, got Kirby's Pinball Land. I just remember Kirby being pink in the front. That's all I got. Need for Speed Rivals was a launch title for the PS4. Probably had a PS3 version. Came out in 2013. I remember always, I always feel kind of bummed out. Pardon my language. I always feel kind of bummed out at the start of a console generation because there's always, the games seem to lack motivation. And there's always this weird brooding darkness to games where it's like every new console generation, it's like, it's like they're focusing more on your aunt and uncle buying the console than you. I mean, I guess now that's normal. I just remember aunt and uncle being this strange notion back in the 90s. And I feel like Need for Speed Rivals was like way too like sophisticated and clean looking. There are at least two cars on the front. One of them is red. And I know that it's a gray sky and like a black road. And it's just like the, the red car pops. It's just kind of sad looking except for the red car. I played the game, it's all right. Tetris Worlds? Well, throughout its history, Tetris has had a Tetris has had not much going for it outside of geometrical shapes. The first time I ever played Tetris was at a, a friend's house. He was my mom's friend's son. He had it on the PC. His mom had bought it for him for the Nintendo. And he didn't want to play it on the Nintendo. He wanted to go back and play the PC one because the PC one has better graphics, dude, he said. My brain was waking up at that time. And I was like, man, it doesn't have better graphics. The graphic design in Tetris for NES is timeless and beautiful and tasty and delicious. And it has nice UI and it has good sound effects and just everything is just so brilliantly polished. Whereas the Tetris he's got on his PC is some broke down dumb sort of trashy Tetris where the blocks fall at kind of the refresh rate's not perfect because his monitor kind of sucks. However, what had fooled him into thinking the graphics were better was the fact that it had like pictures of Russian architecture and such and a space shuttle in the background. So I'm guessing Tetris Worlds is a later Tetris? Because I know Tetris Grandmaster Challenge brought it back for the Xbox 360. It brought back the pure, unrivaled, unadulterated, sheer, shocking, terror instinct, fatal thrill of Tetris. So I'm guessing Tetris Worlds is a PS2 game or a Xbox Zero game or a GameCube game. And I'm guessing it just has some Tetris blocks and then also like some dumb art of something in the background. I've never seen it, so I don't know. Detroit Become Human, I didn't become human, I'm still here. It's got that guy's face on it. You see his, uh, he's justified down on the lower right side, and you see his eye, and there's like a city skyline in the background. That's all I got. X-Men Legends. That's an X-Men game. Okay, so I know X-Men for Genesis, I know X-Men 2 for Genesis, I know X-Men for NES, I know Wolverine, Rampage, Adamantium, Good Time, or whatever it was called. I do not know a game called X-Men, what? X-Men Legends? I'm assuming it's one of those Activision Marvel games that they made a few of and then they stopped making them. I remember when Marvel Ultimate Alliance came out a few weeks ago, I just remember being like, I've never played any of these games. I assume it's one of those. I assume it's by Activision. And it's got Wolverine on it, probably. And it's probably got Nightcrawler, uh, Cyclops, Storm, probably, because you gotta play as Storm. Iceman? No, Iceman's too goofy looking. Nightcrawler's too goofy looking too. They probably don't have Nightcrawler on. No Professor X, because you, they don't want to put Professor X on a video game box. It doesn't strike people as like the thrilling character to play as, because you can use his mind. 
Magneto is probably on there, shooting somebody with a pistol. Final answer. Alan Wake! Alan Wake. I'm thinking of the Xbox 360 version, which has the word Alan, and then the word Wake. And there's like white, misty smoke, like gushing out of the word holes. And you can see some trees in the background. And I remember being touched and moved at the typographical audacity of having a man's silhouette form the keyhole in the letter A in the word wake, which is somehow like slightly more centrally justified than you would expect. W is a wide letter. And he's got a, he's got a flashlight in his hand and he's like coming out of the mist. And then the rest of it's all negative space. Twisted Metal 3. Well, it's got Sweet Tooth on. Sweet Tooth is the, uh... so again, I was just talking about how I was feeling bummed out at like the beginning of every console generation. And PlayStation 1, I was, was the most bummed out I ever was because I, I had loved games like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy 3, which we now call Final Fantasy 6. Can't even call Final Fantasy 6 Final Fantasy 3 anymore. I just remember being really bummed out with the beginning of the PlayStation 1 because all the games were like, what if your favorite Nintendo game was for grown-ups? And their idea of for grown-ups was like, what if Super Mario Kart was about serial killers? And it's like everyone's a serial killer in Twisted Metal. And there's no character more iconic than Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth is, they're all driving cars. Sweet Tooth is driving an ice cream truck. It's a big, ugly, square, cubicle ice cream truck with like a clown head on a jiggly spring on top. And the clown has flaming hair and razor sharp teeth and a red nose. The hair is like yellow and the face is white. Um, and I remember he was on the box of Twisted Metal 1. And uh, I remember the license plate. I remember holding it and like laughing in 1996, finding it funny. Like one day in the game store that his license plate is Ice Cream, I-S-K-R-E-E-M. Because if they spelled it Ice Cream, it would have looked just like it's saying Ice Cream. So, and they couldn't say Ice Cream because that would ruin the joke. So it's Ice Cream, I-S-K-R-E-E-M. That's Sweet Tooth's license plate. I remember that because that's all I got is stuff like that. I remember Twisted Metal 2 also had Sweet Tooth on it. No. Twisted Metal 2 had the Eiffel Tower in the background because it was like Twisted Metal World Tour. They wanted you to, they wanted the stress from the box art. Now Twisted Metal 1 came in one of the Big Boy Tall Boy boxes for PlayStation 1. Big Boy Tall Boy boxes. Where it was before they switched to the regular size CD jewel cases. So there was a lot of room for art on the front, which is how you get that license plate and then you get the verticality. However, Twisted Metal 2 was released on one of the little jewel cases. Twisted Metal 2, for real estate purposes, they had to take the new character that they were confident in, which was the guy who is like imprisoned with his arms inside of this, uh, these two giant tires. They, they put him like front and center. So he's got his bare rippling muscles and his arms in these wheels. And then above him was the Twisted Metal logo, which had Sweet Tooth's face. In. And then the Eiffel Tower's in the background to stress that it's, it takes place around the world. These serial killers have, they've driven their cars across the ocean to Europe. Twisted Metal 4, I've skipped over Twisted Metal 3 on purpose. Twisted Metal 4 had Sweet Tooth on it twice. It had Sweet Tooth in his car in the lower right, and then it had his face in the logo. And I remember seeing that and laughing at it and thinking, this is actually kind of cool. Because uh, I have in my head, a, I can rattle off a list if anybody wants one later, of video game box arts that, well not just video game box arts, but album covers and movie posters that have the same thing, the same image repeated. Best example of which is Shining in the Darkness for Sega Mega Drive. This is one of the few games that I own, that I own physically, that I, that I keep with me in my life. So it's not really a miracle that I can remember this. So he's like a cutout from the box art, outside the box art, and then the box art is in a window inside and the logo down on the bottom. It's very pristine. I like it. So that's why I think Twisted Metal 4 is funny. And then Twisted Metal Black, again, PlayStation 2, sort of a new thing. 2001, Twisted Metal Black, it's just Sweet Tooth's face, the full length of a DVD case. And you can see that he's wearing like a mask and it's like a leather strap, because I guess the Vogue was stuff like Saw. PS1 game Loaded had this similar uh, clowns gone wild kind of aesthetic. Clowns gone wild. So you've got like Sweet Tooth's face in shadow 
He looks like he really could kill you. And previously you've never seen Sweet Tooth the person. This all comes around to Twisted Metal 3. It's just Sweet Tooth's face. The whole, the whole thing is Sweet Tooth's face. And I would, I would put down $100 on it. Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2, the unreadable title. It's got the characters on it who are not Disney characters. It's a DS game, is it 3DS? No, 3DS is Dream Drop Distance, because 3Ds. And I know it has a lot of negative space. Is it the one where the, a guy's eating a, the ice cream? I think he's eating the blue ice cream pop on it. And then I think there's a, a lot of negative space, like a white background. Like it's like white, it's very white. And then a couple characters, try as I might, who they all featured prominently in Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't, I don't you, you forget their names like until you start the game back up and then you, yeah, so there's my friend, Axios or whatever his name is. Sounds like an insurance company. Ghosts and Goblins. I'm gonna go with Ghosts and Goblins for the NES, for the Nintendo Entertainment System, because that's the one I encountered. Speaking of repetition on art, I really like the Shining in the Darkness and I really like the, the Sweet Tooth on Twisted Metal for all of the original Capcom games for NES had the box art in a window in the middle, like the original Mega Man did. The box art in a window, and then in the background, it's like this square graph paper laser grid that's like red and blue and it's fuzzy. And I remember it saying like high definition graphics, high fidelity sound or something at the top in that Nintendo style font. And I remember that it says Nintendo on every Capcom box from that era three times. It says, licensed by Nintendo for use. Was it for, was it for play or for use? Was Nintendo more or less personal back then? The graphic design is reminiscent of a blank VCR tape. So I'm guessing it was licensed by Nintendo for use with, for use with, on, for? Uh, Splitting preposition hairs here. Licensed by Nintendo for use with the Nintendo Entertainment System. And then there's the Nintendo seal of approval at the bottom. And then there's a Capcom logo in the upper right corner of the box art. And then there's another Capcom logo in the bottom left. And then there's an image in the middle drawn by Susumu Matsushita. And I know it's got Arthur, King Arthur. Everybody knows King Arthur is the hero of the Ghost and Goblin series. And it's by Susumu Matsushita. And it's, so it's got that airbrushed style of his. I remember nothing of the composition of the box art. Of, of like the actual image illustration. I just know that, well, except is Arthur, I think he's jumping in his, in his like traditional pose where he's got the, the leg out. Let's try and get this for my thumbnail here. Okay, so. Uh, I can freeze frame on that frame and it looks like I can hold this up a lot longer than I really can. However, you will notice my mouth is not moving right now. So that's how you know that I'm no Jean-Claude Van Damme. I know he's jumping to the right or the left. He's jumping to the right, because this is America and we read left to right. So he's jumping to the right. They would flip an image to make sure somebody was facing right back in those days. So. And I, I recall it was uh, Susumu Matsushita's airbrushed art. He later did, or later did, or at the same time did all the covers for the Japanese video game magazine, Weekly Famitsu, because the Japanese cover, while featuring a beautiful logo that's done up to look like vampire fangs or demon wings or whatever. It's not Susumu Matsushita's iconic airbrushed style. It's more of a flat 2D comic book style. <laughs> Boom. Didn't even answer, didn't get it, but I got it more than I got it. That's what you come here for. Dance Dance Revolution Hottest Party 2. Well, clearly it wasn't, the first one wasn't the hottest party. Dance Dance Revolution, when I worked at Sony Computer Entertainment, uh, I had a friend who was in like the box art approval department. Every time there was like a DDR game or a DDR adjacent game or a Beat Mania game, she was like assigned to approve their box art. I remember her being exasperated with Konami all the time because they put their logo like too close to the edge. And uh, Sony had these like, these standards where you have to have the logo this number of pixels to the left of the lower right edge if you wanna have your company logo. And then the Sony Computer Entertainment logo goes in a specific place. And they would always put the Sony logo in the wrong place, make the Konami logo like much bigger than the Sony logo. And then she would always have to mark it up in red pen and fax it back to them. And uh, she said that they, they, they had messed up every single Beat Mania game that she had ever seen. And I'm under NDA. I think that NDA is done. I haven't worked there in a little over 10 years. I'm pretty sure that NDA is over. I don't know Dance Dance Revolution Hottest Party 2. However, I'm recalling when Dance Dance Revolution first came out. I know there's always a person. There's always a person. There's always 
Dance Dance Revolution's iconic arrows, like the arrows that indicate which of the four buttons you're gonna step on. There's always, usually, an illustrative, like, artist's rendering of the four buttons, right? So you can always see the top of the person's body and they're always in like a, like a dance pose, you know? Like, they're always like, really excited. And then you can always see their feet, which are always splayed out in like, like some sort of really, really weird stepping pose. And then you can see the buttons and the logo is always aligned with like the middle of their body. So you can always see their arms. I'm guessing there's arrows, there's buttons, there's a person's body, man or woman, it's a girl, she probably has a ponytail. Pigtails, no, a ponytail, ponytail. What color is it? Black and white, red, this is hottest party. Fireworks in the background, fire, it's a barbecue. That's a hot party. Die Hard Trilogy is the word die, the word hard, and then the word trilogy in the middle and a big explosion in the background. And it was on Sega Saturn and PlayStation 1, and it was a launch title for the PlayStation 1. And I feel like there was another box art where you see John McClane's back. Maybe this is the start of the dude's back in box art. You see the back of John McClane, yippee ki mother hecker. You see him just cowboying out, like walking into an explosion. Uh, there's a publisher logo in the corner, it's like Fox. Is it Fox? Because I know Fox released a couple of games for PlayStation 1. Fox Interactive, Fox Software, no that sounds bad. Fox Interactive, maybe that's what they were called, I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff at the wall. Yippee ki -yay, mother hacker. Dirge of Cerberus, 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 Final Fantasy VII. That's the one that stars Vincent Valentine. I don't know that I've ever seen the American box art. It came out in Japan while I was working at Sony Computer Entertainment. It came out in 2006, if I believe. Somebody fact check that for me. And I recall it having like a shiny foil stamped cover with a very nicely centered Tetsuya Nomura drawing? Was it Tetsuya Nomura or was it Yoshitaka Amano? I don't know which one of them did it. It was like Tetsuya Nomura trying to look like Yoshitaka Amano, like they were attempting to look alike and succeeding. So just this very fanciful image of Vincent Valentine wreathed in flowers and there was this foil stamped, like textured foil, because I had that game on my shelf for a long time. I don't like it. However, I loved the box. I really loved that box. It's one of my favorite ones. And then I don't know what the American one is. It's probably worse. It probably has a 3D model. Give me another one. What? Wait, what's it called? Buzz? The big quiz? Is the word buzz in like all capital letters? Buzz exclamation point. Well, I'm, I'm sure the word buzz is really big. And then the big quiz is smaller. And I'm imagining it's like a game show game, like a shovelware game, like a carnival games game. And it's like a bee wearing a tuxedo. Is that what it is? It's like a game show host B. I have no idea what that game is. I have no clue. Oh my God, why did I accept this challenge? There you go, that's the one that's gonna go at the front of the video so that people think that, uh, I think I'm getting 100% of this. Disney Princess's Magical Jewels. It's got diamonds, it's got emeralds, it's got sapphires, it's got rubies. All your jewels, all your magic only for Disney princesses today. And it's probably got Belle, Cinderella, Ariel, Jasmine. I feel like you're gonna cram a box art if you have more than four Disney princesses on there. It's gonna look, you know, TGTBT, as we say. Too good to be true. Too good to be true. Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Snow White. No, you can't put Snow White on a box art. She's not a princess. She's a princess, she's a princess. Ariel, Jasmine, Belle. Belle's not a princess either. She's a princess. They're all princesses, whatever. Ariel, Belle, Jasmine, I don't even know what system it's for. For Nintendo GameCube? No, probably for the Game Boy Advance. No, that was too expensive. Nintendo DS. Nintendo D it was for the Nintendo DS probably. Or the 3DS, maybe the 3DS. You got me, Jaffe. Far Cry 2. Far Cry 2 is a military dude. Uh, not, he's not a military dude. So you see the back of him and it's in shadow and he's walking toward like a sunset. And I recall Far Cry 2, at least for the Xbox 360, I played it on the Xbox 360 because I, I was living in Japan at the time, I didn't have a, I didn't have a gaming PC for a couple of years. In 2008, I did not have a gaming PC. Ubisoft logo down in the lower right, I think. Comic panels with like, so there was, there was like images, like, an, like a bomb, an angry face, a gun, a stack of cash. So I have a nose itch. I think I'm allergic to something. Titanfall 2! 
Titanfall 2's got a robot and it's got a dude on it. And they put the dude outside of the robot because they want you to know that you can, that the gameplay outside of the robot is as good as the gameplay inside the robot. Really, the gameplay outside the, the robot is better than the gameplay inside the robot. However, that game is beautiful. That game is great. It was like $2 on Xbox One a couple months ago. Told all my friends to get it. Two of them did. I think Porter and Kerwin both got it. Good job, guys. I remember that game did not try very hard to sell itself with its box art. It was a very bland looking box art. You've got a giant robot. However, they somehow make it look like more boring than a Humvee. So it was very strange that it was just, it's just like this boring looking robot and it's slanted in one direction. We're gonna go with it's going up to the left. So it's going up that way and your guy's like jumping out. And I remember it being like 2016. I remember it being this like weirdly uh, cynical, like mid 2000s, not cynical, but mid 2000s, there was a lot of uh, orange and teal in posters and box art. I remember the orange and teal in Titanfall being way too muted. And I remember remarking on this to my friend Vito Giswaldi in a Walmart on Black Friday, 2016. We were in Walmart where Titanfall 2 had just come out and it was already $22.94. And I bought it at the Walmart in San Leandro, California. I remember remarking to Vito, I'm like, it's got orange and teal, but it's not like real orange and teal. It's like kind of really muted, almost black and white. What's going on? Couldn't they spring for the full thing? That's one of the best games that has come out a very long time and the box art really lit it down. It just looks, looks wrong. Oh well, Titanfall 3, bring it on everybody, come on. Jedi Fallen Order, you know, respawn. Kings of the game. I need not even mention Apex Legends with wonderful brand. Skylanders Swap Force? Crikey, I don't know. My little brother definitely bought it for his son because his son has every Skylanders. First word I ever heard that kid yell was Skylanders. It's got Spyro on the box, probably. Skylanders boxes do a good job of deflecting my eye as I walk by like the Target toy game aisle. I mean, no, I mean that as a compliment. It's, it's, I see it and it just registers immediately as like a toy, as like something for children. So it has, I'm guessing it has very toy-like blocky typography, like maybe like a solid color background. That's it, that's all I got. I'm guessing at typography. Mag, massive action game. I remember it being really funny that it has the word mag on it. Cause mag was like, the prototype name of it, it's like, they're like, oh, we're working on a game called Mag. It's a 256 player online multiplayer game. First of all, did Battle Royale before PUBG did. That's a big time, big boy, baby boy, Battle Royale. It's a big beefy baby bowl of beefaroni battle. It's like just a big buffet style battle game. And uh, I just remember the word Mag really big in the middle of the box. And it was orange. And I'm seeing a lot of black particles, like smoke particles, like a lot of like little tiny popcorny particles because they were trying to impress people with that particular, particular sort of presentation back then. Game that launched with its prototype. Man, massive action game. Get it today. Only on PlayStation 3. High School Musical, Senior Year, Dance. So it's three different titles. High School Musical is, that's a Disney thing, right, is it? I'm assuming it's a dance game. Disney would not have made a video game based on a TV show that burrowed into a genre so paraphernalia as rhythm and dance had there not already been an example such as Just Dance. So I'm guessing it's for the Nintendo Wii and it's got a bunch of actors that I don't know. Probably a whole bunch of just like actors from the TV show. I'm assuming it's an ensemble thing because it's a musical, right? I had a friend uh, who used to post on Facebook a lot about High School Musical, January Velasco. How you doing, January Velasco? Still the best name I've ever heard in my life. It's a fantastic name. She used to post a lot about High School Musical. Uh, I, can I call a lifeline here? I'm assuming there's a bunch of actors on the cover and most of them are, I have no idea. This is, see, this is good. We've got one where I don't know what it is. I don't know what High School Musical is. What's it called? High School Musical? High School Musical Senior Year Dance. Senior Year. I'm guessing the background is white because it's a Wii game, because I've determined it's a Wii game. Are they dancing? Are they graduating? Are they wearing graduation caps and gowns? That's my guess, that's all I've got. I'm gonna stop before I go any further. There's a, there's a blonde haired girl on there. I'm gonna stop. 
There's a guy with a crew cut as well. Jillian Michaels Fitness Ultimatum 2009? That's a Wii game. I don't know anything else about it. Fitness Ultimatum. Ultimate Tomatoes Ultimatum. So Jillian Michaels is a lady probably, I'm guessing. And she's probably like a fitness trainer. She's probably a fitness trainer dressed like a fitness guru. And she's aiming a gun at the player. So she's wearing like a fitness outfit. She's got a little headset microphone and she's aiming a gun. And she's saying, you're gonna get fit or die, you schlub bag. That's what it says in the corner. It says, get fit or die, scumbag. For the uh, American release, because schlub bag is a common, it's like a German term. 2009, it's a Wii game. Ba Wii Balance Board came out in 2008. It's probably a Wii Balance Board game. That's all I got. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance is a really, really good game. And it's like a top-down Diablo-like brawler set in the Baldur's Gate universe. And it's got the logo at the top with this nice little like half moon thing. There's this big burst of light and you're seeing the back or the front of a lady warrior with a long ponytail holding up like a sword. And there's just this burst of light like blowing past her. That's Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. You know, we got Baldur's Gate 3 coming out. Give me God darn Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. Call me up on the phone, Forgotten Worlds. If that's if they even have a office or a, you know, a headquarters that they can call me from. Call me up on the phone. Call the number you see on this screen right now. And I'll, I'll be the creative director of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. It's almost as good as Spartan Total Warrior. It's, it's beautiful. Just Dance 4. Oh, crikey. That's Ubisoft. Just Dance seems to pattern itself spiritually after Dance Dance Revolution, so clearly it's a dancing person on the front, and clearly it's a silhouette. I feel like I've seen a Just Dance. I know that my brother, my other brother, got his kids like a Just Dance for Christmas once, and it was like Just Dance Kids. It was horrible. They, they booted it up, and a chorus of kids covering songs, and it's just like horrible. So it's like a bunch of a bunch of four-year-olds singing All Star. I believe that one had pictures of a bunch of real children on the front cover. However, uh, Just Dance what, Four, Just Dance Four. I don't even know if that's for Wii or Wii U. Definitely uses Wii modes where you just shake them and you just do this, and then somebody dances on the screen. Except people get really into it, even though they don't have to. I'm sure it's just a, a black silhouette and the words Just Dance Four. Don't like those games because every time I see the front cover. I'm like, don't tell me what to do. Scarface, the world is yours is for PlayStation 2. And it is developed or published by Sierra. By Sierra, it's published by Sierra. And I know that it has this uh, division down the middle. There's like black on one side, white on one side. And you've got Al Pacino on there. And the Scarface logo is red. It's very, very distill looking uh, red, white, black cover. I remember being quite interested in that. And I always wanted to play it. And I wanted to play the Sopranos game also for the PS2. And I remember always like, connecting them in my memory. I always connected them. I always thought, I want to play those too. I just see what's what's weird about them, if anything. Pokin Tournament DX is for the Nintendo Switch. It's for the Nintendo Switch. And I just saw it recently. And I remember remarking to someone, just, you know, little bookends here. Super Smash Bros. had the blue scoop of the Wii U logo and then yellow Pikachu at the bottom. Uh, Pokemon Tournament DX also has Pikachu at the bottom, except it's on the Switch, so the Switch logo is up in the upper left. And so there's red and then yellow, whereas for the Wii U, Smash Bros. for Wii U, it had blue and yellow, which worked a little bit better. However, it's still a nice graphic designy postery looking thing. And I remember it says Pokken in Japanese, which it did on the Wii U one as well. So it's got Pokken in Japanese and in English, which when I was a kid and I liked Japanese stuff, they used to translate all the on-screen text and signage and they would just render it into English. Now, kids today get to just see the kanji ken and the, the hiragana po just coexisting on a box in a store in Target. God darn it. Puyo Puyo Sun? What's, what's the last word? How's it spelled? Oh, is it Ketteban? Oh, okay. Puyo Puyo Sun Ketteban is for Sega Saturn. 
It's very nice. I remember it has a white border and then an image inside the white border and there's this really nicely drawn cartoon sun that's like poking up out of the of the white border. And I, I always like when an illustration like pokes up outside of a border. Kind of like sometimes in Dragon Ball, Akira Toriyama would have like a character's foot like poking out of a frame. And I always thought that was nice. And you could tell he drew them by hand. Keteba. That means definitive edition. No joke. SOCOM US Navy SEALs Fire Team Bravo. I don't know. I'm uh, wearing a black military jacket and a pair of aviator sunglasses. I feel like I should know everything about all military video games. I don't know too much about SOCOM. I just know that every time you see like a video on the internet about Call of Duty or Battlefield, there's like a bunch of comments from people who are like, there should be a new SOCOM dude. So I'm assuming, is it a military dude in a silhouette? I don't even know what system it's for. Because they were on PS2. Is it, if, it, if it's a military dude in a silhouette, Fireteam Bravo makes it sound like it's like bad company. So it's got people in it. So maybe there's a face. There's either a face or there's a silhouette. It can't have both. I'm gonna go with silhouette. I hope I'm wrong. That's all I got. Farming Simulator 2015. I like the Farming Simulator logo. It's that very tightly, nice tight tracking on that skinny italic font with a black stroke. Very faint fuzzy drop shadow. And there's a metallic sheen on the font. That's my way of, uh, of, of BSing my way through that. I'm guessing there's a tractor on the cover. A John Deere tractor, a green one. No. My cousin is married to a guy who's like a regional manager of some sort of John Deere tractors. So every time I see the words John Deere tractor, something sparks in my brain. And I know that it was Farming Simulator 2019 last year that was the first one to ever have John Deere tractors in it. So it's not a John Deere tractor. So I know that there's like a, I think I'm like, uh, there's a farming simulator that's got like a Fent tractor on the front. I know a little bit more about tractors than I should, you know? What can I say? So it's not a John Deere tractor, it's not a green tractor. That's all I got. Not green. Mortal Kombat Armageddon is for PlayStation 2. So Mortal Kombat 1 was just that dragon logo, that black outline logo with like a yellow to red gradient behind the black dragon. And it was on a red to black gradient background. For Genesis, it's mortal above the dragon and combat below. For Super Nintendo, it's Mortal Kombat together on one line under the dragon. Mortal Kombat 2 is like a stormy sky and it's all silver black. Mortal Kombat 3 is a big numeral three that the bottom of it comes down in a, like a really nice, I'm gonna do it backward. And then there's the circle, uh, the Mortal Kombat logo inside the three. And then nobody knows what happened after that. The Mortal Kombat Armageddon is just the logo, except you're only seeing like part of it. And it's like poking, I'm thinking of like the, the greatest hits version. Cause there's, I remember seeing the red and you're only seeing part of the logo. And it's silver, it's gold, it's gold because then they redeemed themselves by going back to like a flat white on black logo from Mortal Kombat 10. And the rest is history. What's next? MLB The Show 18 has Aaron Judge on the cover, New York Yankees. I don't like the Yankees, I won't lie. However, I was walking by it in Target last April, first week of April last year. Um, and I said to my friend, I said, it's MLB The Show. I feel like it's been a year since there's been one of those. And she says, Who's that guy? Is he on the Yankees? And I said, That's Aaron Judge. So that's why I remember that. That's all I, that's all I have. Maybe he's holding a bat. Tomb Raider. Which Tomb Raider? Does it say? Is there a date? 96 or 2013? Okay, so Tomb Raider 2013 has that logo where it's tomb in red and Raider in white. And it's like Gotham font and it's eaten up, etched up, rainy. There's like a wreckage of an airplane in the background. Lara Croft holding a bow and arrow in silhouette and she's all torn up, beat up, worse for the wear. Not worse for wear because she's tough. You use that phrase, worse for wear. Tomb Raider 1, her head is as big as her entire torso and she's got like a fuzzy drop shadow behind her. How is that all that I remember about this? Oh, the PC one, is in, it was in a trapezoidal box when it came out, which struck me as like incredible as a fan of pyramids and ziggurats and Egyptology and Aztec and Mayan stuff. 
I remember just flipping my bonkers off, 1996, when I saw that in the, the video game store, software, etc., at College Mall, Bloomington, Indiana. I remember seeing that and thinking that was cool. And then the PS1 version is just your regular old jewel case. Except I think it's got hieroglyphics. I think there are hieroglyphics behind Lara Croft in the Tomb Raider for the PlayStation 1. Because I remember being like, this is gibberish to my friend. And my friend is like, oh, you can read hieroglyphics. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is just, it doesn't even say anything. Keith, I was lying. I couldn't read hieroglyphics. Um, I, you know, any more than like any kid with like one of those books about pyramids when he was a child had ever learned to read. I couldn't actually read them. They probably were gibberish though. I think there's a bird. However, I'm not sure if the PC version had hieroglyphics. Maybe the hieroglyphics were there to evoke the memory of a pyramid on the PS1 version, whereas the shape of the box accomplished that on the DOS Windows version. It would have been Windows 95. So I think there's no hieroglyphics on the Windows version. All right, what's next? That's it? So Alex Jaffe has told me that there is a pattern to these 47 boxes. And I am literally wearing a jacket with the William Gibson's name in it. If you can see that. This jacket was created by the Japanese company, Buzz Rickson, a subsidiary of Toyo Enterprises to commemorate a book called Pattern Recognition by William Gibson. So I'm really letting my jacket sake down here. I don't know, Alex Jaffe told me he would tell me what the reason he contrived this list, what, what method is behind the madness of this list after I confirmed to him I had finished filming. So I have to guess. I have to guess. How much time do I have to guess? Oh, you said five. He said five minutes, everybody, and I was hoping he would say 30 seconds because if I have to stand here for five minutes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pee in my cowboy pants because I gotta go and I gotta go bad. Wearing cowboy pants. I'm gonna let you all out there try to guess. I'll let you try to guess. And the answer is going to pop up in my hand right now. What? Crikey, I don't know. I'm a genius, however, I was born stupid. So, that's all I have to fall back on this week. I'll see you next time, where once again, hopefully I will not die hungry. Video games forever, kotaku.com. The end. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Gran Turismo 5, Donkey Kong Country, Uncharted 2, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, Fallout 4, Super Paper Mario, Destiny 2, Gran Turismo Sport, Battlefield Bad Company, Sonic Heroes, Wave Race 64, Yokai Watch, Overwatch, FIFA 16, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, Kirby's Pinball Land, Need for Speed Rivals, Tetris Worlds, Detroit Become Human, Xbox or X Men Legends, Alan Wake, Twisted Metal 3, Kingdom Hearts 358 divided by two days, Ghosts and Goblins, Dance Dance. Revolution Hottest Party 2, Die Hard Trilogy, Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy 7, Buzz the Big Quiz, Disney Princess Magical Jewels, Far Cry 2, Titanfall 2, Skylanders Swap Force, Mag, Massive Action Game, High School Musical, Senior Year Dance, Jillian Michaels' Fitness Ultimatum, 2009, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, Just Dance 4, Scarface The World Is Yours, Pokemon Tournament DX, Puyo, Puyo, Sun, Keteban, SOCOM, US Navy SEALs, Fire Team, Bravo, Farming Simulator 2015, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, MLB The Show 18, Tomb Raider. Crikey, I don't know.